All right there guys, hope you're all doing well and you've had a good weekend. Now, um, good result yesterday for Liverpool. Got to be honest with you though, I missed the game. I uh, I was out with my brother that I've not seen for a long time and my grandparents that again I've not seen for a long time and yeah, I I missed it guys, obviously with the early kickoff and everything. I um, kept up to date though of what was going on. I kept getting notifications and stuff like that. So I saw that we went down 1-0 and then we pulled it back in the second half. Um, so this... The little first part of this video, if you guys could let me know your thoughts on the game. I have obviously watched the highlights, I've seen the goals, but I didn't actually watch the game. So the whole McAllister substitute at half time was, is that because he got booked or do you guys think that him in the six just wasn't working? Like what happened there in your opinion? And I've also seen a lot of raving reviews of this uh, Quansa kid that came on. Obviously we saw him in pre-season, we saw him come on against Newcastle. But apparently, from what I'm reading, he had a really good game yesterday. Is this? Have we got another one on our hands here, lads and girls? Have we got another one here? Another? Like we had Gerard, Trent, Curtis Jones. Obviously, he's like getting there now. Have we got another one here? Is this lad gonna save us a bit of money in the transfer market? Shall we say? Do we need to go out and get another one? Or is this just all overreaction to one game? I don't know, guys. I didn't watch it. You let me know down below. I've seen many people that gave him perhaps the man of the match yesterday. Again, as I'm asking, let me know. Do you, do you think he deserves that? Um, but yeah, of course, we've got the Europa League midweek this week, Thursday, if I'm not wrong, about quarter to six kickoff. Now, if that kid played really well, I would fully expect to get another run out in that game, you would think, wouldn't you? It's against a team that's, you know, you don't want to obviously underestimate them, but at the same time, we've got West Ham at the weekend, and they're obviously having a decent start to the season, so we're going to save potentially a lot of the big guns for that game. So Kwanza might get a start. I'd probably play him with Van Dijk in that match. You know, Van Dijk's missed two matches now due to suspension. Probably give Endo a start. Gravenberg will get a start, you'd have to think. Uh, who else? Probably Elliot and Jones will probably make up the rest of the midfield. That probably the midfield, that actually, wouldn't it? Do we play Elliot where Salah is? Jones, Gravenberg, Endo, and then uh, Gomez at right back. Does he come in and do what he did again? Get him, give him another game of doing that. Shimikassin for Robbo, Kelleher for Allison, you know, that type of stuff. But yeah, let me know down below your thoughts on the, the game yesterday. Because I, as I say, I, I missed it. And do you believe that we've got another one on our hands? Have we got another another great player? that You know, he's been with the club since we were five years old, apparently, this Quanta kid. So have we got another one here? Let me know. Now, next bit I want to cover from this video is just a few little bits and bats I've seen over the course of the week. Because I've not done a video for a while. But I did see, obviously, that Hansi Flick got... Um, sacked as the German manager and obviously Klopp's name got circulated as the replacement Klopp's agent for what seems like the umpteenth time has come out and said that he's got a contract to Liverpool he's going to stay at Liverpool however I did I've not seen the article that's a lie but I've seen a lot of people have been like talking about this potential swap that could be happening where Nagelsmann's going to take over Germany for the Euros and then Klopp's going to take over afterwards and Nagelsmann's going to come to Liverpool. Now, I don't think that's true. I'd have to have a look right now. When, like, when does Jurgen Klopp's contract expire? Let's have a look. Um, let's have a quick look. I should have probably got this up, to be fair. So he's with us until 2026. So he's got, what, this season, next season. So he's got, like, two, three seasons left, including this one. Uh, to, if he stays to the end of his contract. Um, now, for me, just going back to Nagelsmann himself, he was one of the managers that I think I put out there. Or not, I, I wasn't doing YouTube back then, but back when Klopp was having that contract dispute, you know, his contract was expiring and stuff like that with the club, Nagelsmann was one of the managers back when he was at Leipzig that I thought could have come in and replaced Jürgen back then. I swear I sent an email into Cop Talk and Duncan that when he was doing the podcast and mentioned it then. Um, I still think he's one of the high, most highly rated managers out there, even though it didn't go so well at buying for him, even though he still won a few things. Um, for me, right now, if Klopp was to leave, my choice would be De Zerbe over at Brighton, but Nagelsmann would be on that list as would, I'd say, Hansi Flick. Uh, he'd be on there. When he was at Bayern, he won everything. Like, he won literally everything. Champions League, the league, the Cups in Germany, 
the World Club Cup. He won everything there. So he is like a successful manager. Could he do it in England? Don't know. But he would be on that list. And then the other manager that would be on that list as well, guys, that I think many of you may not agree with, would be Graham Potter. Now, I know it didn't go well for him at Chelsea. But look at the absolute shambles of a club that has become as Chelsea. Like today, before I've even started doing this video, Lavi is not in the squad. Caicedo is not in the squad. They've spent over a billion on players or whatever it is, yeah? And can you imagine managing that situation? You know, Graham Potter was at Brighton, a well-run club where they got the right players in. And obviously he made the bed, like the foundations of what Deserve is obviously excelled on. So you got to think, like, without Potter, would have would deserve be able to do what he's doing now? So, he's on the list for me as Graham Potter, but I wouldn't say he's, like, above the three that I've just mentioned. Like, it would probably be Deserbe, Nagelsmann, Flick, then Potter for me. That would probably be how I'd go. But that rumour of them doing this swap deal, like, I just don't, I don't put much behind it, guys. I really don't at all. Now... Normally on a Sunday I do do a paper talk, but there's literally nothing in the papers about Liverpool. There was one thing, um, and it was as linking us in Manchester United to this Nico Williams, who I think, if I am correct, is the brother of the other Williams at Atletico Bilbao, uh, Iñaki Williams. I think they're brothers. Um, he's 21, his contract's up at the end of the season, and he's emerged as potentially a fresh... A player to come in and replace Salah should obviously you know with the the rumours that are inevitably going to come out with the approach of January like they started straight away didn't they at the press conference like did you watch the press conference oh, we've got to touch on that like so they touched on that straight away and Klopp was not impressed at all with it but yeah this lad Nico Williams if you load him up on the transfer market he's uh, like I say he's 21 years of age he's a right winger just like Salah so far this season, four appearances, four assists. Um, let's have a look at his last year. Is it last year stuff? I don't know if that was probably his breakout year or something, maybe, potentially. Uh, 36 appearances, six goals, five assists. So he had a decent season, to be fair, last year. And yeah, as if I can see it here properly, yeah, his contract expires next year. Barcelona are the ones that are most favourite to get him. And he's currently valued at 30 million euros on transfer market. So, yeah, maybe one to watch, guys, is this. The only thing is he is right-footed, so we, he's not left, just like Salah. So um, there'll be something there that maybe we have to look at getting in someone who's a bit more of a profile similar to Salah. But just one to watch, I guess, with his contract running out. It might be one that we might be worthwhile watching about. But, yeah, going back to that press conference. So I like the fact that Klopp said... This is not year eight of me being here. It is year one of a new team. Now, that to me, when I first heard him say that, I was like, ah, oh, is he going to sign the new deal? Like, do you know? Like, I don't know. As I've just said, he's got another three years on this one. Well, two and a half years on this one. So, is he going to stay for that and make it 10? Or is he, is he looking at potentially going a bit more? You know, maybe it all comes down to the fact of, how the club is at that time. Has he got the backing? Are the club succeeding? Does he feel like if he moves on, it would be better? Like, who knows? Like, in that, but I thought that was pretty good that he said that. The way he ripped into James Pierce again, like, he really does not like that guy whatsoever. Like, if you've not seen it, it's at the very end of the press conference, so I'd go back and watch it. And James just asked a question about, you know, does having the internationals and having the early kickoff, does it affect the players or whatever, you know? And <laughs> Klopp just ripped him a new one saying like, what, what a stupid question. And then he went on to say some other things and then basically ended it by saying something like, um, why don't you have your own opinion instead of using a sauce or something? Something along them lines anyway. And I was just like, whoo, do you know, like, I don't know what's gone on there, obviously behind the scenes, but there is something that's... <laughs> James Pierce has done that's rattled Klopp, honestly, um, for him just to, for that to happen, and pff, yeah, just I thought that was funny. To be fair, was that, um, but yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much everything to cover off in this video. I know it's not the best, but if you, if you could guys could leave some comments down below of anything you want me to talk about, I'll hopefully come back with a video before the game on Thursday and you know give a preview for that. But yeah, if you guys have anything you want me to talk about, drop it down below. 
and I'll do a video on it if it's if I can find out what to talk about. And, and until then, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.